Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 9th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote a quick diary about some scans that we are seeing targeting GeoServer. GeoServer is an open source Java based piece of software that allows you to organize geospatial data. It offers the typical sort of Tomcat based GUI in order to allow you to upload and access and search data. We have seen scans from one IP address in particular, a Russian IP address, but also some researchers like, for example, Shadow Server are looking for GeoServer instances deployed in the wild. GeoServer has had last year a significant vulnerability that allows a remote code execution without any authentication. I have set up a full honeypot for GeoServer, but uh, after I set it up, well, haven't seen any new scans yet. So if there is anything coming, well, maybe next week we'll have more details. If anybody has seen any actual attacks other than scanning, uh, please let me know. And I've mentioned a couple times in the last uh, two weeks or so about a vulnerability in uh, Barracuda's email security gateway. This vulnerability apparently had been exploited starting October last year, became publicly known mid-May, and then Barracuda also released a patch for the vulnerability. However, until then, of course, several of the devices had been compromised, and Barracuda now made the somewhat unusual announcement to recommend affected customers to replace their email security gateway. So if you believe that your gateway was compromised, you should replace the actual hardware or the virtual appliance. If it was virtual, that's probably easier. No word as to how this will sort of work, like the mechanics of it in particular for the physical devices. If this is sort of a support warranty action, probably call Barracuda if you have a support contract with them and inquire on details. And several tech news outlets have reported that Google is going to add biometric authentication to its desktop password manager that is included in Google Chrome. Biometrics has existed for the iOS and Android version of the password manager, but so far not for the built-in version in Google Chrome on the desktop probably trying to better be able to compete with some of the standalone third-party applications that also synchronize uh, passwords. One of the problems, of course, with the sort of more specific password managers like the one Google Chrome is that they are more or less limited to the particular organization's ecosystem, like in this case, uh, Google and various applications like uh, Google Chrome. And it's not just browser plugins and extensions uh, to developer tools that are at risk of malicious code. It's also mods for games. The latest example is Minecraft. There is a malware that is called a Facture Razor, if I pronounce uh, this uh, correctly, that uh, is being included in a number of popular mods for Minecraft. It's essentially an info stealer, so it tries to steal credentials, uh, session uh, cookies and the like. It acts like a lot of different malware in that the initial implant that you're downloading as part of the malicious mod is really just a downloader that will then download additional jar files, Java code that is then being executed to download additional malware. So the exact functionality of the malware could of course change at any time. There is a list of affected modules, and I'll link to an article at Bleeping Computer. They did a pretty good job in summarizing what's happening here with this malware. One problem that came up is that actually a legitimate company that is creating Minecraft mods was also compromised via this particular malware. And then, of course, some of their mods now also included the malicious code. And in security software that does allow for privilege escalation, we today have Trend Micro's Apex One. A service pack was released that fixes the underlying issues 
Again, very common for this kind of software, sadly, that as soon as you do have any vulnerability, it can easily be then become a purge escalation vulnerability because the software itself often runs several features with elevated uh, privileges. And well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.